Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. We are here in studio today talking sports with Val. And it's uh, been a busy week, been a busy couple weeks here, Val. How are you doing? Yeah, doing great. Just a lot going on. I've, yeah, we've broken a lot of stories on uh, Twitter slash X in the last week about uh, some interesting scheduling things going on at Tippecanoe Valley. They still haven't released their full schedule. I, I, I've talked with some people. The, the full girls and boys basketball schedules aren't out yet, but it's trickling out and... I've, been, things, able to, I've yeah. been able to find out a few things. We know now that the girls' basketball game between Rochester and Valley is going to be on Tuesday, November 21st, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll keep uh, keep you informed as we find out more. Speaking of uh, Tippecanoe Valley, they were here at Rochester last Friday night, the battle for the bell. And for the Zebras, it started off pretty good. They, uh, they scored first here. Alex Deming again week two and two weeks in a row, his first touch of the game. Goes to the house. This was third and 13. You're hoping, well, maybe they'll just get a little bit better field position and then they'll be able to to, to punt it from there. They didn't get they didn't just get a first down on third and 13. They got a touchdown with a 43-yard run, and that was set up by a Brant Beck interception. So Rochester had to be feeling really good on both ends. They had gotten a turnover on defense and scored a touchdown on offense in their first possession, and it was 6 nothing right away as you see uh, Nate Parker tries to run down Deming. Not a little too late. Two-point conversion run was good by Colton Ververted, make it eight nothing. Then this was the big play. It was like it says third and fourteen on your screen. I had third and sixteen. Beautiful pass, Cody Eastgate to Wade Jones for a touchdown, and they made it eight to six. You know, Wade had only one reception for two yards in the game against Wawasee the previous week. He was a big, big factor in this game. Much bigger, a much bigger factor against Rochester than he was against Wawasee. And then this was a, another huge play. Nate Parker. Stays along the sideline, and then Carson Pollock gets a bad angle. Parker cuts it back to the left, and he's gone. 81 yards for a touchdown, and Valley takes a 14-8 lead. Nate Parker was just phenomenal in this game. He had over, uh, over 210 yards of total offense combined rushing and passing. Very impressive field goal by Gage Overby, 41-yarder. His second 40-plus yard field goal already on the season. Yeah. And that gave Valley an 18-8 lead. Then this is the weird play. of Rochester Upman tries to touch a low onside kick. Well, it wasn't even it wasn't even intended to be an onside kick, but it turned out to be a quote-unquote fumble. And Valley recovered. And then this is the next play. What a beautiful pass. Rolling to, for a right-handed quarterback to roll to his left and make that pass. That was impressive, yeah. And Nate Parker gets behind the defense for a touchdown. Valley scored 10 points in a span of 9 seconds. It went from 15-8 to 25-8. to yeah, Unless you've ever tried to do what it, uh, Eastgate did right here, right. you don't know how hard that is. And to throw a just a perfect dime. Yeah, beautiful I mean, touch on that to yeah. a receiver on the move. I talked with Cody Eastgate after the game. He said he'd been seen kind of like a quarterback coach uh, during the offseason. Boy, he's... He'd been he's been taught well. So twenty five eight Valley at halftime, and then this is another nice play. That was a great block. I think it was Cody Black with the block. He was able to sustain his block. That allowed uh, Parker to turn the corner. That's another touchdown. And Valley went up thirty two to eight. Again, this it's a it's a young Rochester secondary. They had a lot of you know, uh, uh, sophomores and juniors in the and you know Parker's a senior. Jones is a senior. This is just tremendous. I mean, this is the athleticism that's involved here, and he stays on his feet. And I think really by now everybody's kind of tired too uh, at the same time, well, except for Wade Jones. Beautiful 45-yard touchdown. And he kind of <laughs> That was kind of weird. He kind of cramps up as he crosses the goal line. But that made it 39-8, and Valley wound up winning 39-8. Rochester scored the first eight points. Valley scored the last 39. And the story of the game was Valley's offensive balance. They had 498 yards of total offense. 242 rushing, 256 passing, and against a Rochester defense that had played really, really well against Wabash last week. Yeah, so Rochester on the road back in TRC play this week. They've got a, a Whitco team that, you know, Whitco coming in, they, they got a week one win, but they had a tough uh, loss last week, you know, as well. So um, you can't go, you can't sleep on this Whitco team. I mean, you can't go in there and expect that they're just going to roll over. You've got to be in there and, and be ready to play. All right. I was talking with um, Rochester coach Ron Schaefer earlier in the week. He talked about he really admires Jack Hill, the quarterback from Whitco. He said, man, he said even when Rochester was just 
pounding Whitco, and, the, and Rochester beat Whit, Whitco 70 to nothing last year. He said Hill kept encouraging his teammates, come on, guys, come on, let's just do this better. Let's get better at this. Let's keep running this. And, and he, he really just admired Hill's kind of his tenacity and his toughness and his, his, uh, his attitude against all hope when Rochester just was out, had outmanned Whitco. And I, th- I think kind of their, Whitco's patience has now paid off a little bit. I mean, again, that game was w- almost one year ago to the day, and Whitco's only won one game since. But having said that, it was that game earlier this year against Prairie Heights, and that's one more game than they won last year. So, I mean, things that, you know, they've got to, you know, again, this is, you know, they only threw the ball four times last week against Peru. They lost 42-6. to six. Uh, But Coach Schaefer wants them to be, you know, again, pass defense has got to be something they've got to focus on because if you're Whitco and you're looking at the game film, what do you think they're thinking? Of course they're thinking about maybe getting their, their passing game more involved. They've got uh, uh, the, uh, Al, I think Allen is his name, number zero, who's a tough uh, tough running back. So we'll see again. Whitco, I think, is, but again, this Whitco, this program is, uh, this is kind of, I don't want to say they're at square zero, but they're kind of at square one, and they're just kind of, trying to make some progress here. Uh, it's going to be tough for them to compete. Rochester's really handled this rivalry well the previous couple of years. So uh, we'll see how it goes. But again, uh, Zebras definitely are going to want to be... Um, we'll see if they can reestablish themselves on the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively in this game. Yeah, I think that you know that's the one thing that they definitely have to... <sighs> You know, it's it's going to be good for them to get another test in that defensive backfield. I think the more work that those DBs get, you know, you talked about them being young, but the more work that they get by the end of the season, they're not going to be, you know, they're still going to be the same age, but they're not going to be as young as far as experience goes. Yeah. And I, I think it's one of those things that, you know, they, they just got to keep working and, and find some confidence back there and, I think that's uh, you know just kind of one of those things that it's just going to have to uh, keep working on as the season goes along. Right, and they're going to also have to want to shut down that perimeter running game because, I mean, Valley was able to turn the corner too easily. Now, again, there aren't many Nate Parkers out there. Right. If every team had a Nate Parker out there, then I think if you were, then, if you were Rochester, you'd be kind of sweating a bit. But yeah, Nate, Nate Parker was in combination back. with Wade Jones. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was you know two very, very talented athletes that were causing Rochester a lot of fits. So. Mm-hmm. And uh, we should also mention Brady. Um, Brady Beck won a sportsmanship award uh, yes. after the Valley game. That was, again, that's something where, uh, and this can happen in, all, in any sport, right? Uh, if an official uh, notices a player uh, behaving in a sportsmanlike way, they'll file a report with the IHSAA. They'll send the medal back down, and so there, uh, Brady got that. And I talked to Ron Schaefer earlier this week about Brady, and goes, "I really, that's really been one of the highlights of my uh, my job uh, when I was a." Uh, when Brady was a freshman, that was my my first year as an assistant coach here, and I got to meet Brady, and I've been able to see him grow, both as a, you know as a person, as a player, uh, over these last four years. And he's, now, now this is his third year as Brady's head coach, and talking about what kind of guy he, what what kind of person he is, what kind of leader he is, and uh, so I'm, I'm not I'm impressed, but I'm not surprised. I mean, yeah, Brady's that Brady's that dude. Yeah, and he, and and, the, and Brady's just the he's very. The least he's not gonna talk. He, he never talks about himself. He, he's always, I think, he enjoys watching his teammates do well, mm-hmm. and, I'm not, and that's not surprising. And you know, we were talking with uh, with uh, Michael Lukens and Rita Price after the game, and ba- and Balen Hyde, and they were talking about this. The sportsmanship involved in this game was probably the most sportsmanlike Bell game we've seen. Uh, <laughs> some might find that cringeworthy, but I thought it was pretty awesome. That I mean the. I mean, it's a it's a very fierce rivalry. They were really going, they were really hitting each other hard. But at the same time, I think the sportsmanship involved was really good. And I think a lot of you know a lot of the kids they do 4-H together. We saw Isaac Ramsey at the Fulton County right. 4-H County Fair over the summer. I mean, I think these, these kids kind of know each other pretty well, and, and there's a lot of mutual respect there. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's the the key right there. You just said it, respect. I, mm-hmm. I think they they know they're they're all you know very good and, and it's a you know a hard played game but there is that respect yeah so one other thing worth mentioning Rochester did have 229 yards rushing and 5.3 yards of carry against Valley right so I think there was this there was this kind of feeling like geez we couldn't get anything going offensively well really you kind of did I mean but I, I mean there were obviously it was the two big plays there was one long rushing play by Deming for a touchdown there was another long rushing play in the first half by Brant Beck but it, Again, I, 
you know, Rochester had a hundred or two twenty nine this year against Valley. They had a one oh six last year. Yeah. Against Valley. So I, I wouldn't despair about Rochester's offense just yet. No. I mean again, no. I, I get it. Rochester was not able to establish a passing game. They didn't complete a pass until the fourth quarter and by then the game was over, but uh it's uh I think it still has the potential to be a really good offense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, three turnovers, you're going to have a hard time winning games with, with three turnovers. And, you know, that one that we saw right before the half with the uh, kickoff after the field goal, that really cost Rochester because instead of going down, you know, into the half, you know, you're only down 10 points. Uh, Valley gets that touchdown. Now all of a sudden you're down 17 points. And, you know, it, it's a really big hill to climb after that. Yeah. And you know, so there's there's those plays, you know, those turnovers, I think, kind of negated what positive uh, Rochester was able to do offensively because it just it didn't seem like there was really anything that was, uh, you know, sustained yeah. because of the turnovers. So. Now, having said that, Rochester coach Ron Schaefer was not happy with his team's offensive line play. He talked a lot about, he goes, some t- he goes, in football, you're either the hammer or the nail, and he said, we were, we were nails against Valley, so that's... Mm-hmm. That's something that they'll they'll want to get better at, but uh, again, I wouldn't. I'm not. I don't think you should be at the point of despair if you're a Rochester fan. No, no. I think they're going to have a you know they're going to have a really good season still. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, so they'll have a chance to get the ship righted at uh, Whitco uh, tonight, and then yeah. for Valley, uh, they get to go home for the first time this season. They uh, they spent their first two weeks on the road. They went to Wawasee and then Rochester. So. They've got a two and O Twin Lakes team coming in, so you know here's the part of the schedule for Valley where it gets gets new, right? Because of the non conference aspect this year, right? I mean, and this is going to be again. This is something that I guess an independent can have. But if you're in a conference, you usually don't have. But the Valley's next four games are at home, mm-hmm. and it starts tonight with Twin Lakes. Twin Lakes won one game all of last year. And they're, they've already won two games this year. They're two and all already. So the Kevin O'Shea factor has uh, has uh, made its footprint already on the on the Twin Lakes football program. It is not easy to win at Twin Lakes. They had a, they've had one winning season in their last in the last seven years. Scott Mannering is a Hall of Fame coach. He could not have a winning season there in four years. So this is not going to be you know we didn't think this is going to be an easy thing for Twin Lakes. But so far, uh, Kevin O'Shea's made an impact already. Now, what do you think of when you think of a Kevin O'Shea coach football team? Well, first of all, they're just fantastic defensive teams year in and year out. Mm-hmm. I mean, his team, his teams at LCC, so many talk, so many team people talk about their offense, and they were great offenses. But their defenses were also just so tough. And they, you know, they, you know, they've held Northwestern and Delphi to 21 points combined through two games. Uh, they're they're doing really well defensively, and remember they lost to Northwestern last year. They beat they beat Northwestern this year, thirty seven to fourteen. It wasn't even close. And the other thing you look at when you talk about a coach Kevin O'Shea uh, or a Kevin O'Shea coached team is that they usually run a spread offense, and they're usually going to throw the ball around some. Mm-hmm. And this team is like that. I mean, they they've got um, the thing about it is they've got a sophomore quarterback, they got a sophomore running back. Um, so this is uh, you know a, a young team, you know with the and watch for that sophomore running back, Colton Robertson. He's pretty special. So we'll see if he if they can have if he can have the type of impact in this game as uh, he did in these first two games. But this is by far the toughest defense he, Mr. Robertson is going to run into. So uh, again, they also have three freshman wide receivers hmm. in addition to a sophomore quarterback and a sophomore running back. So uh, it's a young team. They're 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 figuring stuff out quickly, but. This is by far their toughest game so far. This Valley defense is the toughest defense they've seen. Yeah, yeah. So after starting two games, the first two games of the season on the road, Valley will spend the entire month of September at uh, Death Valley playing uh, four home games in a row. So starts tonight with uh, with the Twin Lakes Indians coming to town. Right. They only have two road games left. So uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, I'll be curious to see. Uh, I'll be curious to see if they can kind of pick pick up. Momentum wise, where they left off against Rochester. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about that sectional last year. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, it looks even more brutal this year. You've got uh, number one, number two, and number 11 in 3A, and Peru. And is, Peru's uh, number 13 this yeah, week. Yeah, number 13 as well. So, right. wow. Right. Garen Catholic is very, right. Garen Catholic is number two. That was the team that knocked Valley out of last year's sectional. And Garen Catholic had a very, very impressive win over Lafayette Central Catholic last week. So, 
Yeah, I mean, this is, <laughs> uh, and I, as I recall, Gary and Catholic was pretty young last year. I mean, they mm. had, they were kind of junior heavy. Yeah. And now they're senior heavy, <laughs> so they're gonna they're gonna be very very good. But I mean, Shatard you know, won a winning state last year, so yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, gonna be tough when you think about uh, what might lie ahead in October. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk some more Rochester Zebras. We're going to talk about the uh, the golf team who is just having an outstanding season so far. And then, uh, you know, tennis, they're doing very well as well, soccer and uh, cross country and volleyball. When we get back here on Talking Sports with Val. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trusts to appeals and guardianships, Peterson, Wagoner & Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. Stop on by to In Your Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574 223 4920 to see how Inyarts friendly staff can help you. Paysetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Paysetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.paysettersre.net. Are you wanting to open up a checking account, savings account, or a CD, but you simply just don't want to make a trip to the bank? Well, I have some good news for you. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can open up a Simply Free checking account, savings account, or CD online from the convenience of your own home. Opening up a new account has never been so quick and easy. Get started today at firstfederalbanking.com. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. All right, welcome back here. We uh, talked over some uh, football there with the Zebras and the Vikings, and let's move back over here to Rochester. Let's talk a little bit about this girls' golf team, Val. I mean, what a week they've had. What a season they've had so far. Right. I mean, on Wednesday night, they traveled to Logansport Golf Club, and they beat Lewis Kess 157-215. to 215. The 157 is the second lowest score in school history. The 153 they had earlier this year was the lowest <laughs> when they beat Winnemac. This was a 157. How about Olivia Bailey with a 34, Ava Thomas with a 37, and Peyton Moore with a 39? And, and the 34 is, uh, I believe, one stroke off of the school record for nine yeah, holes? Yeah, it was two under par for the round. She had an eagle and two birdies. So, uh, yeah, she had an eagle on the uh, short par, uh, the fourth hole, which is a short par five. So she got that. So two under par for Olivia. She, and then... Uh, Again, Ava Thomas and Peyton Moore were in the 30s, and that was coming off a huge win over McConaughey on Tuesday night at Rock Hollow Golf Club to shoot a 163 at Rock Hollow. That might even be more impressive right. than the 157 at Logan Sport Golf Club. 163 to 180 over a McConaughey team that is the two-time defending TRC champ. 38 for Olivia Bailey, 38 for Ava Thomas, 38 for Peyton Moore. Yeah. Is that for consistency? <laughs> and, um, you know, to beat... Uh, you know Daisy Williams from McConaughey. Their star had a 39, so she was she was playing well too. But a huge win for Rochester, especially if they aspire to win the TRC. Most people think it's going to be one or the other, mm -hmm. either Rochester or the Lady Braves. So you know, and you know, these Rochester girls. I mean, none of them has ever won a conference championship before for all the things that they've done, and you can tell that's something that they would really want to do as a team. Sent a sent a little message out to the McConaughey yeah. Braves on that one, didn't they? Coming down to their home course and and scoring like that. Yeah, and remember, con the conference tournament is in nine days, Saturday, September 9th at Rosella Ford in Warsaw. So, yeah, a, a big statement win for Rochester, and that was after um, they had beaten McConaughey by two strokes at the Rochester Invite um, uh, last Saturday. Uh, Rochester shot 364. They finished second out of 12 teams. Culver Academy, who made it to the state finals last year, and is a top 20 team in the state. They won the tournament. But again, uh, Olivia Bailey with a 76 and Ava Thomas with a 78. 
That's mm-hmm. a big time. Peyton Moore shot 96, so for her to then shoot in the 30s for nine holes the next two rounds, that's a, whatever whatever went wrong for Peyton that day, she she fixed it. Yeah. And kudos to her because I think everybody's everybody likes Peyton so much, and for her to to get to 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 get her get her game going back again is really going to be helpful. Uh, Lexi Hawes had a 114, and Ella McCarter had a 122. And Lainey Magonis played a. Lainey Magonis has been playing too. She shot she shot 55 at Lewis Cass the other night, so that's a yeah. sign that she's she's improving. She shot 127 for 18 at the Rochester Invite. Yeah, I think Ella got into the 50s the other night as well. So she's you know obviously for a first time player, but she's uh, you know continuing to improve uh, you know match by match. Yeah. So yeah. So a big week next week at Logansport Tuesday. It'll be at uh, Dykeman Park. So. Logansport will have the home course advantage, and they're a good team, and they're a team that Rochester will see in the sectional, and then a three-way match against Bremen and Plymouth next Wednesday, and again, that's a very, very fine Plymouth team, uh, and you know, Bremen's usually, I don't know much about Bremen girls golf, but they're usually pretty solid, so that'll be a good three-way match, and then uh, that'll set them up for that uh, TRC match, as we mentioned, uh, coming up uh, nine days from now. Yeah, it just uh, continues to amaze me, I mean, just how how well they're doing, and have, have they gotten any uh, poll recognition yet? Or are they still getting kind of snubbed a little bit it's there? Snubbed a little bit, but huh. yeah, not quite. But I mean, Culver Academy is really good, but yeah, Rochester's not received any poll recognition. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit of a surprise there. I mean, you know, as, as well as they've been playing. Yeah, but uh, they'll they'll keep uh, they'll keep keeping on, and I think they're going to surprise some people. Yeah, I you know I was talking with Chad with Chad Thomas and I. I was like, are your kids, are they a little frustrated that they haven't been able, been able to win win a big tournament yet? And, he, and I, I don't think so. I, I, I didn't get that uh, feeling from, from him when he said it. Just, I, I think there, there are a lot of good things ahead for this team. Because remember, they were second at last year's sectional. They were second at last year's conference. And then this year's second at the Rochester invite. They were second at the uh, the Warsaw invite. So they're mm-hmm. going to win one of these. Yeah. Uh, you, you have a feeling. Yeah. Uh, boys tennis, uh, they've had a really good start to their season as well. Who would have thought they'd be six and zero? Yeah, given you know they graduated, you know uh, Brock Bowers and they graduated Braden Zink. We were kind of wondering what this team was going to be like. Well, they're six and zero. Yeah, I mean they're playing really, really well. They beat Triton four to one on Monday night. Um, and again, and that's a that's a pretty solid Triton team. They're not. Yeah, I was yeah. I saw I was at the match. Triton's not bad. I mean mm-hmm. they they had some good players. Uh, Roch, you know I mean. Uh, the three the the one doubles match went three sets, and uh, Harrison Dunwoody and Brady Morgan were able to pull that one out. Uh, the three singles match went three sets. Unfortunately, uh, Ashton Musselman lost that one. But the other matches, Rochester really played well. Uh, Tanner Reinerts lost his, his season opening match against uh, Cam, Cameron Manuel from Valley. He has not lost since. Uh, Robert Bazo has made the uh, great transition from doubles to singles. He looks really there aren't many two singles players who are playing as well as Robert is. Mm-hmm. I mean, he has been just uh, really outstanding, really crisp ground strokes. He really has good angles on his ground strokes, and it's really hard to get his shots back. And then, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, Dunwoody and Morgan are a nice one doubles team. You know, Musselman's been coming along at three singles. And then the, that two doubles team, which is an interesting team, um, Carter Meredith and Jack Reffitt, I got to interview them the other night. They were down. I mean, they won the first set against Triton. Second set, they're down four five, low forty, and Mer- Meredith is serving. So they're one point away from losing the set mm-hmm. and going to a third set. And what happens? They win the next three points. They get it to Deuce. Uh, Triton gets another break point, another or another set point actually. Uh, Meredith wins that point, and they wind up winning the game. They break serve, and then Refit holds serve. And they wind up winning seven five seven five. That doesn't go to a third set. What a mm-hmm. great job by those kids. Jack Reffitt's been playing tennis for two months. He said he doesn't look like it. <laughs> I mean, first of all, he's a big, strong kid, right. and he's and he's really. I mean, again, it's a lot of it with tennis is the footwork. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people, you know, you look at the hand and the racket, but really, it's the footwork. If you prepare your feet, then the 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 actual shot becomes kind of easier, easier. Yeah, and I and I think they're they're figuring it out. But it's interesting because you know, again, with tennis, you know, a lot of it is about nerves. Whether you're playing in the U.S. Open or whether you're playing against. Triton on a Monday afternoon, you know it's like oh I can't lose this point or, or or you're kicking yourself and you you know you make a mistake you make an unforced error and it's like I don't want to do that again and 
yeah, I mean, it, it happens. Whether you, and uh, but I think they they really kind of are are playing through it, and it's a nice young team. They've got seventeen kids out for tennis. There's a lot of you can tell. There's a lot of good chemistry. They're having a lot of fun, and and Mason Heidi is real, but is is doing a great job at kind of bringing these guys along who are at different kind of skill levels. But six and zero in the year, um, and and playing really well. And uh, but uh, again, we're taping this on a Thursday. Uh, it'll air on a Friday, which means we don't know what happened against Peru, which was technically last night. Mm-hmm. That's the big one. I mean, Peru is a conference rival. They're a sectional rival. The sectional will be played at Peru. We'll see how they do. If they can get by Peru, then it's something to really get excited about. Mm-hmm. Coming up next week at Manchester Tuesday. Manchester's always tough. But again, Manchester lost to Tippecanoe Valley earlier this week. That's a, that's the same Valley team that Rochester beat. So I think Rochester can compete it, even though it's at Manchester, and it's probably been a long time since Rochester beat Manchester at Manchester. I think they've got a shot in this one. And then uh, next Wednesday, home versus Wabash. Yeah. A lot of good stuff going on on the tennis courts for the uh, Zebras. And Coach Heidi just, you know, whatever the formula was that he put together with these kids and putting them in the spots, he found the right spots. And, yeah. And they're doing really well. Yeah. And Tanner Reinert says he's added some kick to his serve. Mm-hmm. It's not so much the speed, it's the the spin mm-hmm. that is just giving his opponents nightmares. Yeah. And 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 if you're lucky enough to get the serve back, then it sets them up for the, for a for a volley at the net. And Tanner is a true serve and volley style player, which you don't see a whole lot anymore. But he's really good at it. Yeah. Well, I can imagine. You know, he's about what six three. Yeah, trying six to, two, six trying three. To get a ball yeah. past him if he's standing at the net. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty good stuff there for the uh, the tennis team. Yeah, and, that, and, and then they beat you know they beat North Judson. Did, did I mention they beat North Judson five zero on Tuesday on uh, Tuesday, and that was a big win because remember Rochester lost to North Judson in last year's sectional. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, they're, they're not in the same sectional anymore this year, but still, that was a nice win. Yeah, that was and that was a heartbreaking loss for them in last year's sectional. For them to win five zero. And three of the matches weren't even close, and one was a forfeit. So mm-hmm. really only, only one of the five matches was close. Yeah. Well, we'll keep our eye out, uh, see how they do down at Peru on Thursday night, and we'll talk about that next week on Talking Sports. That, uh, you know, Peru is, you know, always, always such a tough uh, opponent in the TRC. Coach Mike Sane does a great, great job yeah. in Peru. And, I mean, he's... he, he, he uh, You know, they, you know they, they, don't, they don't rebuild. They just reload there and... Uh, you know, it's he, he does a great job. I mean, he's mentored a lot of other young coaches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the soccer teams, both teams had a uh, little bit of a rough day on Saturday with Trinity Greenlawn coming to uh, Blackadder. Uh, and then uh, we're going to actually, as we're filming here Thursday night, the girls are hosting the Culver Cavaliers. We're going to have that one on uh, Channel 4. So uh, looking forward to that. But, you know, it's looking to be another, you know, rough night and not rough night but it's going to be a, a hard one for for the rochester girls because culver coming in they've they've gotten some uh, pull recognition of their own in the girls side right the rochester girls are 0-4 and they haven't scored a goal yet and they're coming off a 9-0 loss to logansport on tuesday that was after a 9-0 loss to trinity greenlawn at home on saturday so i think they just again i think if they can just get a goal i think that would really just improve their confidence but yeah now they've got but now they've got to try and stop giselle viegas giselle has scored 20 goals already this season Ooh. and it's still august yeah that's impressive and again again, wow. again we're taping this thursday before the rochester game yeah yeah so that's gonna that's gonna be a big one for for the zebras at blackadder trying to you know compete with a you know a, a culver team that comes in you know they're they're scoring at a pretty high clip I think and number it, seventeen in the polls this week. Right, and yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They actually, even though they lost to uh, they lost to Jimtown, they moved up from number nineteen to number seventeen in the Class One A polls. So they're even getting some poll recognition. Casty Banks has also been playing very, very well for Culver. Mm-hmm. So uh, Katie Scout and a veteran a goalkeeper. So uh, you know, Coach AJ Nice does. We we talked about his how he's brought that program up, and I uh, I'm impressed, but I'm not surprised. Mm-hmm. On the boys' side of things, you know, rough day against Trinity, but they've they've been uh, they've been putting a couple of games together. That was a uh, their first loss in the last what three games there. Right, they lost to Trinity Greenlaw nine zero on Saturday. That game was uh, stopped with about sixteen oh five to go in the game due to the mercy rule. But wow, what a nice bounce back win as they beat Wabash two to nothing on Tuesday at home. A great win. They got Spencer Backus back. He's had a Backus has a, had a back injury. Hmm. That has. And getting him back has 
helped a lot. I just said the word back a lot. Yes, I? yes. <laughs> uh, so getting and then Carlos Placencia has been great, and uh, you know Wyatt Davis has. We saw what you know what Wyatt Davis did against Cast, and he's just such a good athlete, and he plays so hard. Uh, Braden Crum has been playing really well. This is a this is a much improved team. Boy, to beat Wabash, that's a great win because that's a team you could wind up facing at sectional. Mm-hmm. So they're now three and two on the season. They're one and zero in the TRC. Um, back to the TRC at Manchester on Tuesday. Manchester's three one and one. Manchester's also a sectional rival. Manchester's good every year. You play mm-hmm. at that field. It's always kind of a unique environment there, where the field's kind of sunk into the ground. Um, but the Squires are always tough to beat on their home turf. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see how they do. Manchester's always got usually one or two just high-flying goal scorers. We'll see how the Zebras can do against them. And then at North Miami next Thursday, and that's a good North Miami team. North Miami is 4-1, and one, and their only loss was to McConaughey. And McConaughey is a really, really good team. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they've they got uh, you know a lot ahead of them, but you know, they're – Still a very young team, and they're putting some things together. Well, uh, Placencia, he's just he's such a talented kid, and you can just see the confidence he's playing with. He's playing with a lot more confidence, and he's able to put the ball in the back of the net from kind of different angles. Uh, again, with uh, you know, they just get, you know again Trinity Greenlawn, the team they, they lost nine zero. That's a, that was a really tough Trinity Greenlawn team with Palmer and DiLorenzo. They had a lot of speed up the middle of the pitch mm-hmm. too. It was funny. I was talking with Coach Eric, with uh, Coach uh, Eric Backus, and he was like, "Yeah, he goes when Grant Bailey has trouble catching up with you. He goes, you're pretty fast." Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and they, they were tough to they were tough. And you know, I mean, Grant and Grant had a couple of great defensive plays himself. But yeah, I mean, I think that was just one of those where you kind of just kind of wipe it from your memory and move. And, and they and they did, and they moved yeah, on. So. Yeah, they got the win at Walmart. Again, Parker Wallace is trying to play football and do play football and soccer at the same time, and at the same time, he's. Coach Backus said he's not 100%. He's dealing with kind of like a left knee or a left leg issue, and it's you can tell he's favoring it a little bit. But he he's still better, as Coach Backus said, an, an 80 uh, uh, a Parker Wallace at 80% is better than most goal, goalkeepers at 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how uh, how's the cross country team doing? Well, um, they'll run on Saturday at the Caston Invite. They're yes, they're back at the Caston Invite after about a decade away. They'd been going to the Manchester Invite. On the Saturday of Labor Day weekend this year, they're going to the cast and invite. We'll see how they do. Again, it's uh, you know a pretty young team uh, with Wes Steininger is really the only uh, you know the main senior contributor, and then you got Grant Bailey, and then you got uh, Lane Shank as another senior, Reese Johnson, uh, Leandro Javier, and Hayden Shuck. So it's those six boys, and then the, the two girls who ran uh, at that season opening meet at Logan Sport and Allison Callaway. And uh, Brooklyn Chandler, and hopefully Cadence Bradley will be back. I know she's been dealing with il- illness, so hopefully she'll be back. That'll, that'll give her a, th- a third girl on the team. But they're not going to have a they're not going to have a complete girls team this year. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that some is something will will uh, change over time. Mm-hmm. But uh, back to the cast and invite is a it's a it's a meet that you know we we like going to every year. But it's an it's an it's a meet that Rochester has not been to in a long time. So they'll yeah. be back. Yeah. Good to see him back there at that one. That's always a, a fun day, and uh, you know, looks to be uh, decent weather too. Yeah. So, all right, uh, volleyball, Rochester Zebras. Uh, well, they lost to Culver Academy last Thursday, twenty-five ten, twenty-five thirteen, twenty-five sixteen, and they lost their TRC opener to Lewis Cass on Tuesday night over in Walton. They lost twenty-five twenty, twenty-five nineteen, twenty-five nineteen. So. Uh, they still only have that one win on the year, which was against Delphi over at the Tomahawk Invite, uh, one and seven, I believe. Uh, again, we're taping this on Thursday. They're hosting Peru on Thursday, so we'll see how they do there. Rochester has a great historical record against Peru, but again, this is a very, very young Rochester team. That's you know d- different lineups. They're you know Coach Linnea Strasser. She's uh, you know, again she's staying optimistic. They're 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 really working on uh, servicey. That's been a big focus of theirs. Uh, and then, you know, they ran into a pretty tall uh, Lewis Cass team with Macy Garland and Abby uh, Heilman and Ava, Ava Hubner. I mean, it's a Lewis Cass team. They're, you know, they're right at 500. They're, they're, this is one of the better Lewis Cass volleyball teams I think I've seen in a while. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's just been it, kind of a frustrating time for Rochester. They get Lily let back for the Culver Academy match, and then she misses the Lewis Cass match due to illness. You know, Audrey Bollinger is playing really well, and then against in, in on match point against Lewis Cass, the last point of the match, she 
winds up landing on Dara Strasser's foot or arm or something, and she winds up hurting her ankle. So hopefully they can have Audrey back for the Peru match because she's just such a key part of this team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Aubrey Wilson has been uh, doing a good job at setter, but again, again, it's just a lot of the you know the communication issues. Dara, Linnea Strasser has said that the communication issues are getting better, but it's still something that they need to work at. Yeah, because after Peru, you know, again they get a whole week to prepare for. We, we talk about this every year. They always have a week off before the Southwood match, and they got to go to Southwood this year. You know, Southwood, the, the defending TR, two-time defending TRC champ, the defending uh, sectional champ. They're going to be really good in their gym. Of course, of course they are. They're Southwood. Well, and you mentioned Southwood. I want to say congratulations to Tom Finnickel. He was uh, just recently inducted into the, uh, what is it, Indiana High School Volleyball Association Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. You didn't see that? No, I didn't. Oh, wow. Yeah, they had a... He isn't already? Uh, well, yeah, I guess not. But they uh -huh. had a uh, kind of a secret ceremony, or they, they tricked him, I guess. It was supposed to be like an alumni night. And, oh. Uh, I saw that they uh, were able to uh, yeah. to get him out there on the floor with a bunch of alumni. And, yeah, that was smart on their part. Yeah. If they, if they made a big deal about it, he might, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, he might disappear. Yeah. I, I love Tom. He's such a great oh, guy. yeah, but, such a great uh, guy. Yeah, well-deserved. Yeah. I, how many years has he coached there? It's been close to 30, isn't it? Over over thirty. Over he's been, thirty. He's been wow. there since I think the late eight late eighties, early nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think probably closer to thirty five. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, he he single handedly built that program from the ground up. Yeah. I mean, that's what he's done there is just remarkable. Yeah, yeah. They're they're competitive. You know, for a small school like that to stay competitive every year, that's yeah. a, that's a big thing. And I talked with Rod Nyes, who's a pretty good friend mm -hmm. of Tom Finnicles, right. the pioneer coach. He said that they are. Their freshman class this year is loaded. It's one of the best classes. He's, oh, that's just what he's, everybody in the TRC wants to hear. One of the best classes he's ever had. One of the best classes oh. he ever brought in. A team that, I mean, the, the, and these kids have been competing in like national tournaments. Oh my gosh! Tournaments, so yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. Wow, this year's freshman class. This year's freshman. This year's freshman class. This Southwood, year's freshman. Yeah. Wow. That's just what everybody needs to hear, yeah. right? If you're a TRC member, mm -hmm. you just, uh, Southwood's coming in with another really good class. Yeah. So, unfortunately, of course, as we air this, it's going to be Friday, but and we had some illness in our crew as well, and uh, Caleb is, uh, I think it's kind of going around the high school, and so we were going to try and do the soccer and the volleyball Thursday night, so unfortunately, we're just going to do soccer Thursday night, so we'll, we'll miss that per, uh, Rochester Peru volleyball match, but uh, good luck to the Lady Zebras, and as you watch this, they hopefully have the victory in hand by then but uh yeah so let's take another break here when we get back we're going to talk some argus uh and Caston on our next segment here on talking sports with val Criskins pools and spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs with a wide selection to choose from Criskins is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need no matter what your budget is to learn more about our services visit Criskins pools and spas.com Call 574-857-3100 or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Criskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Looking for an easy way to provide custom branded products for your business, school, sports team, or fundraising event? Let the Winning Edge set up a customized web store that features branded products tailored to your business, school, church, or charitable cause. With a wide variety of customizable apparel, sports accessories, office accessories, and custom tumblers, the Winning Edge is sure to provide you with the best style that suits you. Find your edge by calling 574-223-6090 or going to our website, thewinningedgeathletics.com, and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Hello, sir. How can I help you today? I'm looking for a special gift. We have no tolerance for tomfoolery today. 
What do you mean, tomfoolery? What I said was, we have a nice selection of jewelry today. Oh. May I suggest that you give my friends at Affordable Hearing a call? Affordable Hearing offers hearing testing and unique solutions for everybody. We guarantee the lowest prices in the area and now have offices in Rochester and Logansport to serve you better. Call to book an appointment today. Welcome back here. We are talking sports with Val for a Friday afternoon, week three of the fall sports season here. And let's talk a little Argus Dragons here in this segment. The Lady Dragons held their invitational on Saturday in the soccer pitch, Eugene Snyder Field, the perfect pitch. And it went one and one on the day, finished in second place, defeating John Glenn and losing in the championship to Hanover Central. Yeah, I was there for the Hanover Central game and let me just say, Han first of all, Hanover Central is really, really good. Hanover Central is ranked number 12 in Class 2A. Mm -hmm. And so them winning the tournament, they, they, I think they beat Fort Wayne Southside like 10-0 or 9-0 before then. So they're really good. Um, Argus is playing the, the typically tough schedule that they usually do. And you look at the teams they've lost to. I mean, they're really good teams. But also this is a young Argus team at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's trying to kind of mesh between some of the older players and the, the younger players. They need to get... I think, I think Lily Hines needs to get more touches. But at the same time, you can tell some of the promise with the freshman. I really like Hannah Willis, uh, the freshman. I think somebody said that she has a, a dad or a, who's a coach in the kind of the feeder system. So she's grown up playing tennis. So, tennis. Soccer. Hmm. So she's she's playing really well. So look for our – I mean, she had a great goal against Hanover Central. So uh, I think she also had one of the two goals against John Glenn. So to me, John Glenn, that's a really nice win. I think this is a team that's – Gonna, gonna, it's gonna take a while to peak again, just because they're trying to incorporate some new parts into the team. But uh, we'll see how they do. But uh, again, uh, just just a young team at this point. But yeah. uh, Hanover Central had some studs. They were really good. Yeah, and it was a good win in the morning uh, session against a, a pretty good John Glenn team. Right, John Glenn's got a solid program. Yeah. Who's uh, you know, I mean, they're you know they've got what nine hundred students, and Argus has two hundred. If that, yeah. So I mean, that's yeah. that's a very nice win and a win two to one. I think they've, you know, Olivia Lead has, play, you know, played as well as she could. I mean, she was really under the, under under the good, gun against Hanover Central, but I think played well against John Glenn. So again, just trying to incorporate the new pieces into the into the kind of the the veteran the veteran players uh, who are back. But boy, again, we we talked about this. You grad the the players that graduated last year were just such a key part of their team. It's mm -hmm. it figures that it's going to take a while. Yeah. On the boys' side, the uh, you know young team there for the uh, for Coach Todd Vanderweel, but they do pick up their first win of the season against Laville. They won eight to two. How about Luke Stoltz? Three go three goals and three assists mm -hmm. in the same game. So, and you can tell with Luke, he's just a lot of the games. He's just the best athlete on the field. I mean, mm -hmm. he's I mean he's tall, he's strong, he's fast. It's there just aren't many people who can have the physical attributes that Luke does. And now he's getting. His on the ball skills are really improving. You can tell. And how about a hat trick for Ethan Pets? With Ethan, we saw a little bit last year that you know it was just a matter of finishing and maybe getting a little stronger, getting a little more skilled with the ball on his foot. And he had a hat trick against Laville as well. Uh, Austin Owens had a goal. Jackson Kindick had a goal. So yeah, I mean a, a very good win. But I'm kind of not surprised. I expected them to beat Laville. Laville's a team that's struggling a little bit. You look at Argus; they're one and four. Do you want to? Do you want to guess what the record of the four teams they lost to is? I mean, well, they, uh, I'm going to say it's about 750. It's 19 and two. Oh, it's so even it's, better. It's than over. It's over 900. Yeah. I mean, the losses are to Warsaw, uh, Oak Hill, uh, a very good undefeated Elkhart Christian team that we haven't really been talking about, and then they, you know, well, we were at the Bell game last Friday. Argus had their own big rivalry game the, playing the Faith. Faith Christian at home. And they lost, but you know that's a faith Christian that knocked them team team that knocked them out of regional and team that's one of the better teams out of the Lafayette area, regardless of class. So, mm -hmm. yeah, one and four, but against a really tough schedule. We'll we'll watch this team. I think there I think there's there's a there's a lot to be interested in. A lot. This team is improving quite a bit, and I I think they'll be pretty good by the end of the season. Yeah. Uh, with, you know, kids like uh, you know R Elias Ricosi, uh, Kyle Penn, uh, Zom. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can see these guys getting get, getting better. I mean, I, in a lot of ways, they're victims of being compared to you know the 2019 and 2020 mm -hmm. teams, which was just phenomenal. But this team, this they keep getting better and better, and you can see they're they're 
um, they're getting stronger on the ball too. They're not getting knocked off the ball as easily as they were last year. Yeah. And you, you mentioned Ethan Pets. I, I did want to uh, you know give uh, some good vibes, thoughts, and prayers to the Pets family. Their 13 year old daughter was diagnosed with a tumor on her, I think, brain stem. Mm. It's inoperable. They're down at Riley. I know there's uh, a, a food. Uh, list going around to, to help the Pets family while uh, mom and dad are down there. I know Andy very well. And so, you know, we're praying for you guys and, and hopefully that uh, there's a, a good outcome out of this because that's a, that's a rough thing. I, I couldn't imagine having a, a sick kid like that and to have a 13 year old daughter that's going through this. So, thoughts and prayers to the Pets family for yeah, sure. Definitely thinking of them. Um, uh, Argus Volleyball, we saw them the other night down at Caston. Um, you know they they just continue to uh you know they they're, they're young and obviously a, a very young coach as well so they're you know going through their lumps here this season but the numbers are good and if they can continue to work here they can you know make something go here with this yeah I lost 25-5 25-7 25-3 to a, a really good cast and team mm-hmm. so we'll, we'll see and that was after uh they lost to uh Lakeland Christian last Friday again the Argus Volleyball plays their conference matches on Friday night, so yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll see how they they improve from here. But uh, I think they got Lakeland Christian this Friday, so uh, I know they've got a conference match. I don't recall who it is, but we'll see how they they, they improve from here. But again, it's a young team. Yeah. Shelby Weiser, I know, has uh, been playing a lot in that front row. Yeah, it's going to be a conference game next year with Caston. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about Caston here a little bit. The uh, the football team, you know, we talked about it going in. You know, we, we knew it was going to be uh, a challenge for them heading out on the road. But uh, Yeah, they lost to North Justin 52-7 to last Friday. They're 0-2 in the year. They lost 16 straight. But having said that, they had 199 yards of total offense against North Judson. And I think that is something against a really good North Judson defense. So I think, that, I think this is something... Where yeah, the final score doesn't look good, but I think they're getting they're they're getting better. Jabez Yarber, he had he's averaging 80 yards of total offense a game. He's averaging 56 yards rushing a game. He's averaging 24 yards receiving a game, and they're trying to get Grant Yadon involved too. He's getting you know he's he's one of the better. If he's not the best tight end in the Hoosier North, he's one of the best. And I, I don't make that claim lightly either. I mean there are a lot of good tight ends, but Grant, I mean. You can be covering him; he still catches the ball. He's just mm-hmm. good. he's just a big, strong kid with good, solid hands, and he can catch the ball in traffic. So, those are kind of their two main weapons. And then you got Kyle Rodebush, who you know gets a few carries here and there. But again, it's just the Hoosier North schedule is kind of relentless, and now they're zero and two, and they got to go to Triton. That's this Friday, and that's not going to be easy either. Yeah, Triton's uh, putting together a pretty good start to their season. Right. I mean, there's so much talk about who's, you know, Anthony Shoes not playing football at Triton this year, even though he would have, would have been a senior, and people are wondering, what's up with Triton? Well, I think they're pretty good. I mean, they lost to, to LaVille last week, but it was 22-16. They were right in the game until the mm-hmm. end, and that was after a, a win over South Central. So I think this is a pretty good Triton team. It's a pretty athletic Triton team. Yeah, I think Dante Workman has kind of filled in right. what Shoe would have been doing. and Him and how about Wayne Reichert and Vincent uh, Prater? They're two running backs. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a pretty solid team. I mean, you know, don't if you focus too much on what they don't have, you're going to lose focus on what they do have, and they're yeah. pretty solid. Now, the, the, what was interesting about the, the triton Laville game last week is that, okay, here's a trivia question. How many yards rushing did Cole Shively have against Laville last week? Oh, boy. And fifty. One. One. He had one yard rushing the entire game. They're gonna oh. want to get they're gonna want hit to get him going. Mm-hmm. And that means if you're cast and you gotta secure that secure that edge and not let him turn the corner, because once he turns the corner, he's real fast and he's a great athlete. So mm-hmm. we'll see if the cast and uh defense can keep uh trying from getting those big plays because it's a, it's a again it's an athletic quick team. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how they do, but again, it's uh, this is just a rough, you know, at Judson and at Triton, that's a tough back-to-back yeah. road situation. Yeah, and then they go home next week and Pioneer's coming to town. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes there. The The volleyball team, just that one match this week with uh, with Argus. You right. Know, not too much trouble there for the uh, the volleyball and that was And that was after they went 3-1 and one at the Tri-County Invite last Saturday. And got off to a bad start. They lost to Tri County in three. Uh, so kudos to Tri County. I didn't know that they were that 
they must be really good. But because it, it's usually they're not the best team in White County. Usually it's usually been Frontier or North White. Mm-hmm. But Cast of Monsters back. They beat North White. They beat Cross Point Christian Academy. I don't know much about them except they're not IHSA affiliated and they're based in Indianapolis. And then a really great win for Caston against South Newton. Mm-hmm. So again, I don't know if that's necessarily a bad a bad week, but just uh, three and one. I mean, they're what eleven and three in the year. And that, that, of course, that was after that loss at home to Pioneer last Thursday. But I think mm-hmm. they've, I think they'll move on from that. You know, I mean, Caston didn't play very well against Pioneer. Pioneer really like, took it to them. Pioneer just played great volleyball that night. But uh, again, I, I, I like the two setter system with uh, McKenna Middleton and Annie Harsh. I mean, that's. I mean, the, you know, again, they played a good tempo. Macy Hinderleiter is just playing really well. I mean, she does something every match, which is like, wow, Macy Hinderleiter can do that too. Mm-hmm. I mean, now she's hitting, she can hit from just about any angle. She can hit opposite, she can hit outside, she can hit from the back row. Uh, this is a pretty good serving team, though they didn't have a good serving game, serving match against Pioneer. So I wouldn't worry necessarily too much, but it's all about getting ready for Southwood by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. And I again, it's just hard to imagine Pioneer losing a conference match, but we'll see how Caston does. Uh, Caston again, they got a whole week off. They don't play again until uh, next Thursday when they travel to Winnemac. Yeah. Uh, how's the soccer team looking down there at Caston? Uh, the loss to Peru five to one the other night. Uh, Drew McGrew, freshman, who we we really liked him when we mm-hmm. saw him earlier. He scored his first career goal. Alex Craig had the assist on that goal. Uh, the, the issue with the team seems to be that they kind of run out of gas a little bit in the second half. That happened in the Rochester match that we saw, and it happened in the Peru match. That was a 1-1 match at halftime, and Peru wound up winning 5-1. to one. Yeah. So that's something they'll try to get corrected. Uh, they have a home match against Wabash coming up uh, on uh, – actually, we're taping this on Thursday, so it's happening tonight. So, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you, you will know this by the time – you will know how they did against Wabash by the time you see this probably. Yeah. So uh, cross country, we talked about the cast and invite coming up on Saturday. They were down at the uh, Cass County uh, meet last Saturday and yeah. uh, had some. Yeah, a four team meet. Girls finished fourth, boys finished fourth. So but that was a tough meet. I mean, there are a lot of good runners in Cass County. Yeah, I mean, yeah. especially at Los Cass uh, dominated the the meet again, winning both the boys and girls. Right. So. The girls, it's really more of a pack team. Miley Rude has been cast as front runner on the girls' side, but she's really been running well. And then, you know, Camilla Hernandez Rios and Alexa Lau, all three of those girls went finished between eighth and eleventh place. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a pack team on the girls' side. On the boys' side, it's more of the Edison Byram show. Edison's just he's by far the most experienced boy on that team. Mm-hmm. Finished eighth overall. Boy, if Edison Byram is the eighth fastest running in your county, you get a pretty fast county. Yeah. Yeah. Really good, uh, really good competition. Right. I mean, and we'll Lew- talk. We'll yeah. talk the Pioneer Boys here when we get down to them. But, right, the yeah. Pioneer Boys are really good. The Lewis Cast Boys are really good too. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Anything else casting wise before we take a break? Girls Golf finished uh, second the other day in a meet against OD. They've been dealing with some sickness within the program, but Shaley Strasser shot a sixty three, and Savannah Zimmerman shot a sixty four. And for Savannah, that was a personal best for nine holes. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk Culver and Pioneer here on Talking Sports with Val. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. Since 1974, Steve Moore Agency has provided the City of Rochester with customized insurance solutions that will fit your needs. With a variety of coverage policies for business, home, auto, life, and more, Steve Moore Agency is sure to cover all your insurance needs. Call now at 574-223-3010 or stop on in at 602 East 9th Street to see what Brody Moore at Steve Moore Agency can do for you. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. 
should be customized to patient needs, should strive for better health outcomes, should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over 50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com or call in at 574-223-3156. Hey, welcome back here, talking sports with Val, and uh, let's talk a little Culver Cavaliers. The football team uh, lost a tough one on the road at South Central. I was going to say uh, now dropped to 0 and 2 in the conference, but not quite yet. South Central's yeah. not in the conference just yet. They're going to be there next year, but um, yeah. you know they they got to try and find a way to bounce back, and they've got a you know, really good Knox team coming into the. Cavalier field here tonight. We knew South Central would be, would be ready for Culver. Culver beat South Central sixty-one to nothing in last year's sectional. You don't you, you, don't, you don't think they uh, just glossed over that? Yeah, and forgot about you, it. You don't forget that yeah. once you see that Culver, once you see the Culver uniforms getting off the bus, you're ready to go. And unfortunately, South Central was, you know, they were really on it. I mean, they got the, you know, they're the really good running back in Aaron Hogan and the really good quarterback in Zach Hanshar, and they were just able to kind of pound it. Uh, pounded on the ground and really pull away from Culver in the second half. It was 28-22 at halftime, and South Central won up winning 44-22. Again, on a hot night. And again, this is a young Culver team where it's just, again, it's it had to have been, it couldn't have been easy to play. Long bus ride. You know, just a, a tough night for Culver. And on top of that, Jack Rogers got, you know, he, pretty severe cramping where he couldn't play in the second half. And he had over 100 yards rushing in the first half, and he had a long 58-yard touchdown run. So, with Rodgers and Ethan Binion, they've got a good one-two running back combo. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've they've had you know, they haven't really gotten the passing game going yet, but at least they've got that basis of a running game going. And it looks like the offensive line is kind of it's developing. But again, they're just so young on the line, and do, can they hold up for four quarters, especially when it's 80 degrees outside? It's mm-hmm. it's easier. It's it's not easy. I mean, they've got you know some kids and you know uh, uh, Drake Zorich and. And these kids are coming along, and it, the future's bright. But again, they're just they're playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores out there. Uh, you know, this week they play Knox, and this is kind of a nostalgic moment. This is the last ever football game between Knox and Culver. And think about that rivalry. And the, I mean, that game used to mean. I'm, I'm going to defer to you here. That oh, game used yeah. to mean everything for yeah. the game of the the game that everybody had circled every. Yeah, you know, it was it was always homecoming game for us at Culver mm-hmm. and. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it was the homecoming game for them at Knox, and yeah. you know when it was at Knox, and uh, you know obviously you know there's Stark County kids that go to Culver, so there's you know that border there with mm-hmm. uh, with Knox, and so yeah, it's, yeah, it's huge. I was talking with Austin Faust earlier in the week. He said you know a lot of the Knox kids come here for the trades program, mm-hmm. and a lot of our kids go to Knox for their vocational stuff. Yeah, so career center type career stuff. Career center type stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they, they, this schools are pretty closely aligned so it's going to be weird that this is the last ever football game between the two but again Knox is off to playing really good I mean I guess this is a good time to play Knox because they might be looking ahead to North Judson next week but I don't know yeah talk Uh, about rivalries that's a that's a huge one too for Knox right again you look at Knox they've got a terrific you know they got they got a new quarterback in Rowan Jordan but he's kind of a veteran player Mm -hmm. so I mean he's a senior but again if you're playing quarterback for Russ Radke you probably are pretty good, and you've, you know, it, you know, he doesn't just let anybody play quarterback. So I would imagine he's pretty tough. I talked with Austin Faust. They're preparing for Jordan like he's just another running back. Mm. And again, the the running, and that's probably the correct way to look at it because the quarterback and Russ Radke's offense, Russ Radke's offenses over the years has always been a prolific runner. Mm-hmm. So he's going to be. So Jordan's going to be very involved, and of course they've got those two terrific running backs, Jake Conroy, only a junior, Miles McLaughlin, only a sophomore. But they put 46 points up on the board at McConaughey last week. So this is a team mm. that's, you know, that was putting after scoring 42 against Winnemac. So this is a hard offense to stop. Not a big offensive line, but they get to the they they get to their angles on their blocks. It's it's tough, and they're, you know, we'll, we'll see if Culver can get something going offensively though with Rogers and Binion because they again McConaughey put 36 points on the board against Knox, but McConaughey is also a passing team, mm-hmm. and Culver is just 
kind of trying to figure things out passing wise with Jonas McEwen. Yeah. By the way, Jonas McEwen is playing really well on the defensive side of the ball at that safety spot. Yeah. Well, he's going to have to have a big night. Uh, they're going to have to find some way to slow down that Knox uh, rushing attack. <laughs> Whew, they are tough. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I still remember that game against Rochester last year. There. Oh yeah. I mean that was, came down to one two point conversion. Yeah. Miss. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean. Right, and I was just so impressed by Conroy and McLaughlin last year. Like, you've got to be kidding me. These guys are, uh, one's a sophomore, one's a freshman, and now that one's a junior and one's a sophomore, and that's just another extra year they've been in the weight room. Mm-hmm. Yep, so, uh, you know, the Cavs look to rebound after an 0-2 start, and it's it's going to be a tough one. They are at home at Cavalier Field tonight against the uh, Knox Redskins. Uh, yeah. Volleyball team. And also, John R. Nelson Gymnasium opened the other night. Yeah, the volleyball team got yeah. to play uh, at home yeah. in the high school gym and looks beautiful. The new floor, brand new wood. Uh, you know, they tore that thing all the way down to the concrete and new bleachers. And, you know, it's it's been a long time coming. Obviously, yeah. those, I think, have pretty much been the, the standard since uh, day one of that school. So I don't know of any renovations that have really taken place, you know, as far as the floor and the bleachers go. Uh, they did the HVAC, you know, mm-hmm. ten or fifteen years ago. But uh, yeah, it looked great. Yeah, and they they christened it with a win against the Warriors. Against Winnemac, yeah, they beat them in three. They're now four and five on the year. Uh, you know, they, they and I think this is, a, but they've got a huge match uh, again. We're taping this on Thursday, so by the time you watch this, they'll have played Triton, and that's a very very good Triton team. Who's both a conference rival and a sectional rival. So we'll see how mm-hmm. they do. Again, Triton's got more height than Culver does when you talk about Addison Veers and Macy Hensley and Maya Davis. We'll see how Culver does. I mean, but this is a Culver team that's defense is what Culver does. I mean, again, you see Bryn Barron, and Bryn Barron can hit the heck out of the ball, and she can hit it all over the place. But what Culver's stock and trade is their defense with Avery Garland in the back row, with Shelby Olivares in the back row, with Grace Sieber, who's, I mean, she's a great setter, but she can, I mean, she keeps the ball up off the floor really well. So we'll see how they do. Uh, but this is a team, you know, they're four and five. But you look at who they lost to. I mean, they lost, you know, at Caston. I mean, this is yeah, John them to five. John Glenn, a Marquette Catholic, who won. They lost to Marquette Catholic earlier in the week, but that's a Marquette Catholic team that won their sectional last year. So again, they're going to get tested again. But after that, you know, after Triton, you know, their next two matches are against Argus and South Bend Career Academy. So right. those are those are they'll be heavily favored to win both of those. When you get those two, and then then who's up on your schedule? Pioneer. North Judson. Mm-hmm. Two big teams, two big conference games. Yeah. Yep. So it's it's uh yeah I mean if you want to play with the big dogs you gotta you know if you want to if you want to be the big dog you gotta beat the big dogs. Right. Right. Yeah. So. But I, again, I, I like this team a lot, and everybody's kind of got their roles figured out. This is a. But again, they play a tough schedule. Yeah. So we talked a little bit earlier about the uh, girls' soccer for the Cavaliers, and of course we're going to see them on Thursday night, or we saw them last night as you watch this. But uh, how are the boys doing? Adam Neese, you know, yeah. new coach there. Well, they played one game so far, and they're zero and one. Yeah, and they don't have another game for another week, so so just uh, still light schedule for the first part of their season, and right. still trying to get things going. Yeah, 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 I think that's kind of from previous years. Yeah. Uh, having to cancel games, I, hopefully that's something they'll re- get rectified. Especially, and especially once they move into the new Hoosier North, with adding just adding Argus and North Miami to their schedule will help out right, a lot. Right, more conference teams. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, any cross country notes for the Cavaliers? Uh, nope, none that we know of. Uh, we haven't been, uh, we haven't seen anything from them. So they'll be at that Culver, uh, that uh, Cast and Meet on Saturday too. So we'll get a good look there. Okay. Good deal. Let's move down the road to Royal Center and talk Pioneer Panthers. Uh, the football team won two games last year, Val. They've won two games this year in two weeks, and uh, a good one for them up at Winnemac on Friday night. We got some footage for you here of this one, and it was all Pioneer all night long against the Warriors. Wow, and they're, and they're going to the option, and that's a way to get Micah Rands more involved in the ground game. But, boy, it starts with that – fullback and Rylan Toloza has just been special all you know through two games already I mean he's taken it up a notch and he was already pretty darn good Caden Hill here he's yeah, another you, really good back for the uh, Panthers right I mean you've just got a lot to worry about because Toloza runs the trap and the uh, he runs the trap and the the counterplay so well seems like we've seen that and then uh, Hill, Hill around the perimeter and then 
And then and then Rands, I mean, yeah. Seems like we've seen that number combination in the backfield of Pioneer doing uh, things before, about 5 and 15. Yeah. That's a... Uh, Gives you nostalgia for the Llewellyns. Yeah, kind of a... You know, a nice little backfield there with Hill and Teloza and, you know. Right, but what's different is that kind of... Now, if you're playing Pioneer, you've got to be very wary of the midline because of Teloza's so good, and if, if Rands decides to... He'll either put it in in Teloza's belly and have him carry it, or he'll or he'll put it in there and then yeah. sneak it back out, and then he'll run. Yeah, there's a there's a keeper by Rands, and he, he runs in for the touchdown from about 22 I mean, yards. That, that's, yeah. that's been one of the real – his impact is on the ground has been so impressive. And he can kick PATs. And he can kick PATs, <laughs> too. I mean, they, they scored six touchdowns, only kicked two PATs, but I'll take it. And, and the young offensive line just keeps getting better. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's the other thing, too, how physical they've been on the, both lines of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. And so uh, they beat Winnemac 38 to nothing. Uh, interestingly enough, they beat Winnemac 38 nothing last year. So yeah, I think that's the, uh, I think I, I had it in my football uh, column. It's, what, the fifth or sixth time they've shut out Winnemac since 2015. Uh, they've the defensively pioneer has just had been able to stop Winamax offense and they did so again. So, uh, yeah, pioneers just playing really well. And you know we mentioned it's the last Knox Culver football game. No, it's yeah. also the last Pioneer Laville football game coming yeah. up this week. Pioneer heads up to La Paz to take on the Laville Lancers and Laville's also two and zero. Oh. Yeah, and you know talked with Coach Adam Barrier earlier this week and he said. You know, similar kind of similar communities, and kind of how they value their football teams and mm-hmm. football programs. And yeah, I mean, it's usually I think it's usually youth football night when 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 Pioneer travels to Laville and he goes. It's usually a good crowd. So mm-hmm. yeah, we'll see how they do. I mean, what's been interesting about Laville is that you look at um, Lucas Plummer's numbers through the first two games. He's been good, but he hasn't been sensational. Lucas Plummer, like we were kind of. Thinking he'd be, I mean, Triton really kind of held him in check the other night, and mm-hmm. and they had they've had trouble. Laville's had trouble getting their passing game going, so we'll see how the Pioneer defense does in this game. But and they also, you know, Laville graduated a great running back in that Paul Dewitt, who yeah. was just oh, terrific yeah. for them. But they've got a new guy, Cody Allen. He's a junior, so he's a year younger than Plummer. And look look out for him. He had over 100 yards rushing against Triton last week. He had over 100 yards rushing against Bremen the previous week. Pioneers got to be able to hold Cody Allen in check if they want to win this game. But it, it it looks like I mean could it be winnable? I don't know, but I think it, Pioneers should be able to compete. But based on what we've seen the first two weeks, yeah, yeah, and I, I think what was it two years ago that uh, Pioneer went up there and and got the win at Laville in uh, you know one of those games that we to, thought that, twelve to seven, and then yeah, we kind of thought that Laville, and then there, and there was yeah. a rematch in the sectional. Yeah, 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 but they won't be meeting in the sectional, right? So. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, Pioneer at Laville tonight. Um, but yeah, Kate, I'm glad we mentioned Caden Hill. Eight carries for 56 yards, seven yards a carry. That'll do. Yeah, I, I think he's settled in and found his spot. Yeah, you know he's been bounced around in that backfield at different places. You know his entire career and combined with what he gives you on defense. Yeah, at that safety spot where he gets about 10 tackles a game. Yeah, Pioneer had 10 tackles for loss against Winnemac. They were just in Winnemac's backfield all night. Yeah. And you can't reiterate it, reiterate it enough how young this Pioneer team yeah. is. You know, what, what do you say, eight uh, juniors and seniors, and the rest of them are freshmen and right, sophomores? Right, right, yeah. So, very young team. and, right, and Especially on the line, lines of right. scrimmage, especially yeah. young. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much all freshmen and sophomores with maybe a sprinkling of uh, upperclassmen mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. Because most of your upperclassmen are in the backfield. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, the volleyball team, we didn't really talk about the uh, match with the Pioneer at Caston because that was uh, after we taped last week. But, you know, after losing in the Cass County invite, uh, Pioneer comes back and, and defeats Caston in three sets at home in the conference matchup. It right. Was, uh, at Caston, 25-15, 25-18, 25-13, just a really impressive match. It was, you know, I was at the Cass County tournament match, which was 12 days earlier back on August 12th. And, uh, just a night and day difference in teams for, in 12 mm-hmm. days. Part of that was getting Elizabeth Rance back. Part mm-hmm. of part of it is um, Brooklyn Board just feeling, I think, more s- solid about her knee. Mm-hmm. And I think part of it, too, was just a difference in kind of a little bit different strategy. I think instead of 
hitting right in two right in two casts in his block. They went down the line a little bit more. Mackenzie Rogers was just incredible. I mean, she was just painting painting lines and painting corners all night. And when you can hit the ball that hard, and, and but with accuracy at the same time, I mean, they were just not going to. And on top of that, they kept everything off the floor defensively. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adeline Kripe played sensational. I mean, she ser- I mean, we talked about her serve. She's a great server, but she also played great on the defensive end. Nothing hit the floor, basically. I mean, and that's a casting team that's loaded with good hitters when you talk about Finky and Hinderleiter and Scales. Yeah. Yeah, they kept the ball off the floor all night. I yeah. Mean, Pioneer played great. They were not going to be beat. Uh, so... And then they went to the uh, Lafayette Central Catholic Tournament on s- two days later, so they didn't really get a chance to celebrate that one. And they went one and three, so they're re- now seven and, or they they they're eight and six on the season after that going one and three. They were seven and six, but you look who they lost to. They lost to Andrean in three sets. Again, this is this is these are best of three matches. So mm-hmm. they took a set off Andrean. They took a set off L- uh, Linton Stockton, who was the state runner up last year. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I mean they beat. Uh, they, you know, one and three doesn't sound good, but they played fine, and that'll that'll really toughen them up. Right. Uh, by the time right. we, we talked to, about the quality of the teams that were at yeah, that tournament, yeah, I mean they played they mm. they saw nothing but good teams all, all 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 day. So I I I wouldn't uh, despair if I'm a Pioneer fan. And well, they didn't despair because they came back on Tuesday night and they beat Logansport in three. Yeah, that's their second win over Logansport on the year. Yep. So eight and six. Um, again, we're taping this on Thursday. Pioneer is traveling to Northwestern. Uh, Thursday they should be favored to win that though it's a pretty tall Northwestern team but I think this is a more it's a more experienced it's a young Northwestern team and mm-hmm. it's a veteran pioneer team the other thing Pioneer is going to be the favorite uh, and then uh, a home match with Knox next Tuesday Pioneer should be favored to win that one as well for that big Harrison tournament coming up on Saturday September 9th yep and the Harrison tournament is always a big one every year yeah we talked about the uh, cross country team. You know, they were at the Cass County Invite on Saturday, and it was a uh, another great day. Carson Meyer getting it done on the boys' side. Yeah. Uh, Violet Montgomery came in second on the girls' side. Uh, just really good. But uh, both teams, you know, fell short of the uh, champion Lewis Cass Kings on on Saturday. But uh, really good results for both boys and girls cross country teams. Yeah, you'd have to say Pioneer is going to have a especially good chance to win the boys title in the Hoosier North. Uh, girls is going to be a lot more problematic um, just because they don't have the depth that a team like, say, Winnemac does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, yeah, Violet's, Violet's, Violet's Violet. She's running great. Um, you know, in the low 21s, I think, is where her times have been. So uh, we'll see how they continue to do as they go to the cast and invite. Yeah. It's yeah, going to be a fun fun day on Saturday. You're going to have a lot of our teams. Like you yeah. said, Rochester is going to be there again. And similar size schools. And interesting to see how uh, you kind of the, the cast, the Pioneer Big Three does against some pretty good competition when you talk about Baker and Meyer and Dot. Yeah. Pretty flat course, not really uh, you know overly mm-hmm. you know challenging as far as the hills and, and yeah. the hollers and stuff like you see sometimes. And you don't disappear out of the line of sight for, you know, 10 15 minutes like you do at mm-hmm. uh Logan Sport for sure. Yeah. So we'll see how the uh the results go there as the uh, boys and girls cross country teams head to Lo- or uh, Caston here on Saturday. So uh good luck to all of the uh, participants there in the Caston invite. Anything else pioneer wise? Um yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Okay. Um well, we'll take a little break here. We'll come. Yeah. Well, I wanted to say I wanted to say this. Brooklyn Borges. We talked with her after the cast match, and she just she said Madison Blicken's staff is like a hundred percent the reason why I'm going to Ohio Christian. Mm-hmm. She said because she and she's just so thankful. She goes when I was a freshman and she was a senior. I just worship Madison Blicken's staff, and for her to go to her coaches at Ohio Christian and say, "Hey, there's this girl from the school that I came from." Named Brooklyn Borges, and you really ought to take a look at her. Mm-hmm. And that—that's what started. Because, I mean, again, not that there's ever a good time to tear an ACL, but when you, your junior year is just especially bad, mm-hmm. especially you, for recruiting for recruiting mm-hmm. purposes, because there's no tape on you. Mm-hmm. And and you know, she, and they just said, okay, well, and they invited her over to, you know, she traveled over to uh, what's the Circleville, Ohio, which is where Ohio Christian was. And Brooklyn went in for a workout and impressed the coaches, and they offered her. Uh, scholarship right there, and she yeah. she accepted. So just wanted to just wanted to give that just wanted to give a shout out to Madison Blickenstaff. What a person she is to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great kid, and you know she's mm-hmm. having a great career down there at Ohio Christian. As she well. really is. Yeah. yeah. So just in her sophomore season. So mm-hmm. 
All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk some uh, Vikings and Warriors in our final segment when we get back talking sports with Val. Evans Agency is here to match you with the best insurance solutions that fit your needs. Whether you need coverage for home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency will make sure you have the protection you need no matter what life throws your way. With a heart and a hand for friendship, Evans Agency is here for you. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Timbercrest Senior Living Community in North Manchester offers services for all stages of life, including independent living, where you can maintain your independence, assisted living in an environment that will suit your individual needs, nursing and memory care for those in need of full-time care. Licensed professionals provide rehabilitation services, including physical and occupational therapy. Call to schedule a visit at Timbercrest, a place to call home. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrient can help you. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Welcome back here as we uh, enter into our final segment here of the day, talking sports with Val. and We're going to move down to the Tippecanoe Valley. and I want to start off, Val, with their soccer team because uh, I think we missed them last week. I felt really bad after we got done. I was like, I don't think we talked about Valley's soccer team. The, the boys' yeah. uh, team, they're off to a really good start to their season. Playing well 2-0-1 through three games, and the one tie was a 3-3 tie against a good Manchester team the other night. So uh, that's not a bad tie at all. This is a team with the... Uh, wasn't know, a real good weather night either. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> a good weather night. Gio Arriaga, is, you know, he's just one of the better players in the area, and he's, again, this is a team that's got a lot of good speed, and Eric Eikenberry has been playing great soccer mm-hmm. as well. So, uh, again, you know, I talked with Coach Trevor Brown before the season. He was like, I'm not worried about scoring goals. I'm worried about preventing them. Mm-hmm. Again, so I guess that's kind of a work in progress because Manchester scored three times. But, again, to get a tie out of that, I think they're pretty happy. And then get a win over Wabash, too. Mm-hmm. Again, you know, Wabash and Manchester are both in their sectional. So yeah, I, I think I think a lot of reason because we were, we were so worried. We're wondering about, you know, you lose Jonathan Ruiz to graduation or as our RTC Player of the Year. It was Christian Ramirez who was another good player. Mm-hmm. What was this team going to be like? They're not big on numbers. They don't have a lot. They don't have a lot of subs. But yeah, two zero and one so far. But again, we're taping the show on Thursday night. So by the time you see this, Valley Willow played McConaughey. We don't know the result of that, but that's a big one. Right. Traveling to McConaughey and playing in McConaughey's turf field. Yeah. How will they do? That's a good McConaughey team with a lot of speed and a lot of a lot of you know more depth. So yeah. we'll see how they do there. Uh, then the Valley is at John Glenn on Saturday, at North Miami on Tuesday. That's a good North Miami team. And then home with Marion on Thursday. So busy week ahead for the Vikings. Yep. So, uh, yeah, Coach Brown in his second year with uh, Tiffany Valley doing doing some really good things over there. And mm-hmm. uh, really uh, I want to yeah. give a shout-out to Orville Haney. He's uh, been filming those games for us. So those are uh, – you know, we're able to put those on in post for right. uh, Tiffany Valley right. uh, soccer. There are three top 20 teams in Valley sectional when you talk about Culver Academy, Fort Wayne, Dwanger, and Fort Wayne Concordia. Yeah, how are the girls looking on the volley or on the uh, the valley? Uh, they, have, they, side? Have a, they haven't won a game yet. They've been off the last week. Uh, this is a young program. They're I think I think they lost to Northwood twelve zero the other day. But that's, again, that's a Northwood team. That's an established program. That's a really good program. Uh, again, it's a young program with a lot of young players. But then their same sectional with Leo is ranked number one in the state, and Fort okay. Wayne Dwanger is ranked number six in the state. Mm-hmm. So, is this their 
fourth season? Third. Third season. Yeah. yeah. And, again, and first year coach and Trisha Setterholm. But again, she's really, you know, and her, and her husband Craig is the assistant coach. I mean, the, the, again, the, they turned around the Rochester program as they, you know, they, and I, I, I would expect they're going to do something similar here at Valley. Again, the numbers, the numbers are pretty, pretty good. I mean, I, I'm sure they would want them to be better, but I think that's kind of in the 15 to 20 range. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, it's a young program. Uh, they're kind of a work in progress. We'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep tabs on them. But yeah, uh, it's. It might it might take a while before they it might take a year or two before they get where they want to go. Yeah, uh, I know. Last week when we talked about the volleyball team, they they were doing uh, very good. Uh, how how their last what, week go? What for a them? nice year they're having! They're ten and four in the year. They went to the uh, Powerball tournament, which is at Plymouth over the weekend, and the first matchup was against Plymouth, a team they lost to in five in a best of five match. Mm-hmm. Well, this time they beat Plymouth. Oh wow! Two zero in a best of three match. Yeah. So a nice a nice win there. And you look at, you know, the, but, I mean, they ran into two, you know, Doolin teams, and they lost to Chesterton, and they lost to Valparaiso. So, two and two on the day. But, again, against the competition they've been playing, not bad, and that was after that was after a tough loss to a good Northfield team at home. But that Northfield team is going to be right there in the TRC mix. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's a team that's, I, I, I saw the North Mi- Northfield play at the North Miami, at the Tomahawk Tournament North Miami. They're very athletic and tall. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you look at, but anyway, Valley, they're 10-4, and four, losses to Plymouth, Northfield, Chesterton, and Valpo. Not bad. Uh, they've got Avi Egoff, gives them some size on the front row. They've got a really good setter in Avery Wagner. They've got a really good player out of the middle, and uh, who helps out of the middle in um, uh, Michele Costello. Uh, they've got a very good player in Colette Blackburn, um, Emma Patrick. Uh, this, you know, Erica Henderson's been playing well. I know we, we gave her a shout-out before. Big, big matchup coming up at, North, at Northwood on Tuesday. Northwood is... They've been kind of the king of the hill in the in the Northern Lakes Conference. I mean, this they are really good every year, and that's at the Panther Pit. And then, you know, and then you get that match, and the next day you got a home match with a good Triton team coming to town, Two Valley. So mm-hmm. we'll see how they do. Two big tests coming up. Yep, yep. Um, tennis team's been doing pretty well after their uh, opening loss to Rochester. They they seem to have uh, bounced back pretty well. Right, I mean they had a great win over Manchester on Monday, three to two, and then a nice win over Knox last night, three to two. Uh, you know Cameron Manuel has really stepped up his game after two years at number two singles. Now he's number one singles. He's the man, and he's really improved his game. I talked with Cameron last night after his win over Knox. He beat his opponent six love, six love, and he said, "Yeah, he goes, you can't you can't just sit back and wait for your opponent to make a mistake." When you when you get to number one singles, you can't sit back and wait to, uh, for the mis- for a mistake. You've got to make it happen. Mm-hmm. You know you got to you got to play. Sometimes you got to put the ball in the corner, mm-hmm. and you got to be able to do it. You got to do it with confidence. And he, he's really doing that. And you know he's a lefty, but he he's hits a predominant amount of forehands. But he 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 is getting more confidence in his backhand. He can approach the net too. Two singles. Tristan Reagan. He's played doubles basically most of his whole life, but doing really well at two singles. He's another really athletic kid. And then you know. Uh, when I saw them last night, William Malott was playing three singles. Uh, he's he's got a lot of potential. Only a sophomore. DeAndre Hamilton was moved from three singles to one doubles, teaming up with Ian Cooksey. Boy, they're going to be scary because Cooksey it looks like he's about six two six three, and DeAndre is about six two six three. How do you how do you volley how do you volley around those two? Right. And they they look really good. Six four six love, and that was their first match together as a team. Hmm. So uh, they wound up beating Knox again. Uh, talking with Coach Thad Malat, this is his first year. He says we got kind of a kind of a a lot of guys in that two doubles, uh, three singles category. who are kind of it's they're trying to sort themselves out. They're all sort of around the similar level. So he he he's intentionally kind of playing around with the lineup, giving guys some chances to play and, mm-hmm. and see how they can do on the varsity. Yep. How's the uh, Valley cross country team looking? Uh, haven't heard from them. I know they were at the Northfield invite last Saturday, but haven't heard. They're going to the Manchester invite on Saturday. Okay. But uh, obviously, Chesney Miller, one of the best girls runners in our area, but she's going to face some good competition. I think Penn is usually there. Morgan Township usually makes the trip all the way to Manchester. That'll be a good. It'll be a good race for her. Again, Morgan Morgan Township girls made state last year. Hmm. Unbelievable. Wow. Uh, Morgan, yeah. How many students does Morgan Township have? Right. Are they it's, Argus' size, maybe a little bit bigger? Maybe a little, but not much. Yeah. 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 yeah pretty small school. So but uh, great yeah. cross country program. So we'll see how they do again on the boys' side. Uh, um, uh, Isaac Whetstone, Eli Sturk um, have been kind of the some of their main guys. Jim, Jimenez 
has run pretty well. So we'll see how they, uh, they do. But really, Ch uh, Chesney on the girls' side is kind of the, uh, you know, she's kind of the most experienced runner, girls and boys-wise. Yeah. And then you have Bailey Buster and Ava Minix and McKenna Lau. Yeah. Uh, let's bounce over to Winnemac here. We already talked Winnemac football. Um, how about the yeah, Winnemac volleyball two, team? Yeah, oh and two, oh and two. Need to need to score a point. Uh, playing at North White, um, Eli Quaysbarth and C.J. Hunt are the two guys they've got to stop. Volleyball wise, they're one and fourteen on the year. Uh, they went zero and three at the Northfield Invite the other day, um, and that was after. And then they you know they go to Culver and they lose in three. So this is a a team that's uh, struggling a little bit. Again, we're taping this on Thursday. Winnemac is playing Knox on Thursday night, so by the time you see this, will you know you will know what the, what they will have done against Knox. But it's a Knox team that's struggling as well. So mm -hmm. I think this is a winnable match for Winnemac. And then next week, home with West Central and home with Caston. Another mm -hmm. tough week. Yeah, I mean we know. I mean West Central's a pretty athletic team, and we know about Caston. They're a very very athletic team who is uh, going to. Really imposing block along the front line. Right, right. Um, any Winnemac soccer notes of note? Two and three on the year. Uh, Winnemac has scored 17 goals in those five games, and Connor Burton has scored 13 of the 17. Yeah. So he has just been carrying this team. Uh, we'll see how they do. They've really had trouble stopping. Again, the defense is something that I think is going to be something that we know Connor Burton can score goals defensively. Can they stop teams moving forward? Uh, that's going to be big, and we should mention we got to give another shout out to Bianca Huizar, girls golf wise, mm. medalist again against Lewis Cass last week or earlier this week. She has just been playing great golf. She's been consistently in the low high thirties, low forties, just every mm -hmm. every nine hole match. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know what more we can say about it. She's just been every every match. She's just been great and setting records along the way. Yeah, well, it's not an exaggeration to say she's one of the greatest golfers in Winnipeg history. No, I mean, Rules if you have the records, yeah. that, that pretty yeah. much puts you up there, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, a lot of uh, a lot of exciting stuff coming up here as we uh, wrap up talking yeah. sports. Oh, football-wise, I wanted to give a shout-out to Willis Dennis Jr. Had a good game against Pioneer last week. Okay. From what I'm at? Yeah. Okay. Do we want to talk about sectional assignments? Um, you have... 50 seconds if you want. Okay, Rochester girls will host a sectional. Rochester boys basketball will travel to Lewis Cass. Valley boys will host a sectional. Uh, and uh, North Miami will host a girls basketball sectional. That's where Winnemac and Pioneer will go. Okay. And uh, Culver. Culver. Culver will host a girls sectional. Triton will host a boys sectional. South Newton will host a girls sectional. And Caston will host a boys sectional in 1A. South Newton will host a sectional. That's where Caston will be headed. Yep. South Newton. If yep. you don't know where that's at, just drive towards Illinois. Yeah, in Kentland, Indiana. Yeah. And wrestling wise, Rochester and Caston and Winnemac were all assigned to the Plymouth sectional. Tippecanoe Valley moves from the Plymouth sectional to the Peru sectional. So the which, only area team that will go to the Twin Lakes sectional is Pioneer. Which which means going to Plymouth sectional, now they move to a different regional and semi state as well. Right. Plymouth so, sectional feeds into the Penn regional. Penn regional feeds into the East Chicago semi-state. Right. So a lot different path for right. the uh, Peru Zebras. sectional. Peru sectional feeds into the Peru regional. Peru regional feeds into the Fort Wayne semi-state. Right. So a lot different path for Rochester to get to state this year. Right. Remember Rochester, the two-time defending Fort Wayne semi-state champ team-wise, and now yeah. they just got moved out of the Fort Wayne semi-state. That's yeah. bi it's big news. Yeah. Statewide for sure. All right, that's going to wrap it up here. We will be uh, live here in just a few minutes with the Rochester Zebras at Whitco. We've got Valley hosting Twin Lakes tonight. Um, who else? we got Culver hosting Knox is going to be on as well. So uh, we're going to have a, a little variety of games for you coming up tonight. One other thing, I've started a Threads account. Uh, I'm not going to be putting a lot of content, but... Uh, I'm not going to be putting any content on my Threads account that isn't already on my Twitter slash X account, but... Start Threads, try something new. Hmm. I don't even know what that is. Uh, threads is a new, it's a meta. It's kind of like a competitor. It's kind of a social media platform. It started by meta. Kind of similar to, some people say it's a competitor to Twitter. Okay. Um, it's, but it's affiliated with Instagram. And you can find me at Val T Sports RTC. Okay. On Threads. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night.